What is going on you guys? Today in this video, we are gonna talk about how to edit the footer of your WordPress website. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of like that annoying pesky copyright credit text that you see in pretty much every single WordPress website. Now, I understand this. If you're a developer and you make a theme, most of the time you want to have an additional backlink so that more people can find you. But if you're making a company website or anything like that, it just doesn't make sense to leave this here. Just it, in my opinion, it just looks a little bit tacky. So I'm gonna show you how to edit the footer of your WordPress website regardless of whatever theme that you have. It's really not that difficult. Does it help if you know some code and some programming? Yes, but if you don't, it's okay. I'll show you just the few things that you can edit it's really not that bad. So let's let's dive in here to my screen. You can see here, this is a new blog that I'm setting up for uh, another side project that I'm working on. Um, but you can notice down here in the footer, it says Rentastic blog, uh, powered by WordPress, theme by made for writers. I just don't like that. I don't like how it looks. I wanna get rid of it. And I, at the end, I want it to look something a little bit more like this, just because it's a little bit more professional. You've got copyright, the date, all rights reserved, and then you have a nice logo. And then we can go back and we can add these other links. I don't know that we'll cover that in this video, but I'm gonna show you how to get rid of these annoying copyright text. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our blog and we're going to go to appearance and then themes, but the very last option, which is theme editor. And we'll click here. Now, I, I do want to give a little disclaimer here. Actually, actually, two two things that I want you to note. If you make changes here, they they can be overwritten, overwritten, overwritten. Geesh, English, Bryce, overwritten. So the way that that happens is if you make a change to the WordPress theme directly, and then let's say a month from now you update your WordPress theme, all of these changes are going to be overwritten. Now the way to get around that is to use something called a child theme. And I'm not gonna cover that in the scope of this video, but you could either just use a child theme or you can remember to not update your WordPress theme. So again, both of those aren't great options, but just, just a disclaimer that if you make a change here, it will be overwritten if you update your WordPress theme. Um, the other thing too is I do wanna say if you, if you don't do this correctly, you can actually screw up your WordPress theme if, if the code is wrong. But I'll, I'll show you how to take care of that in just a sec. So what we're gonna do is once we're in the theme editor, you're gonna make sure that the selected theme to edit right here is the actual theme that you're using, which I've only got one, so that's the only one that's listed there. Even if you have a theme installed, but it's not activated, you can still edit the theme. But again, I've only got the one. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down here on the right side until we find theme footer and it'll say footer.php. You're gonna click on that and then you're gonna be brought to this page that shows your code. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not a programmer, I don't know what to do with code. It's not, it's not that big a deal, I promise you. So what we're gonna do is most of the time you can scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this, uh, this tag right here. It starts with a, an open bracket or an open caret and then it says footer. If you click on that, it's going to highlight where the footer begins, and it's also gonna highlight where the footer ends. Now, if I click up here, we can see, okay, this is gonna um, highlight another div tag. The way that HTML works is there's always an opening tag and a closing tag. Now, WordPress is nice for us because it'll highlight the beginning and the end. So we're gonna find this, uh, this opening and closing section right here. And what I want you to do is I want you to highlight everything and I want you to copy it. And I want you to paste that into another document, either a notepad or just a, like a, just a blank um, editor. So that if something happens, you can just paste the code back in and hit save, and then your file will be back to the way that it was before. But if we look at here, um, we can see what it's doing. It's, it's adding a link to wordpress.org. It's also adding a link to madeforwriters.com, which is the, the creators of my theme. I don't, I don't wanna give them credit. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna take uh, everything inside this div. You can see where the div starts right here and it ends with that little bracket. And there's this closing div right here. I'm actually gonna take everything after that div and I am going to clear it out. If I delete this, we've now got a footer, we've got an open div, and we've got a closing div. Now, if I hit update file, if we have done everything properly, it shouldn't give us an error. 
it should say, okay, everything, we've, we've made these changes, we've saved them, everything is good. Uh, if there is an error, it'll tell you and then you'll have to fix it. So I'm gonna say update file and it says file edited successfully. Now, if I come back here and open a new tab and scroll down to our footer, you'll notice that we have nothing, which is great because now I can control what we put in here and make it a completely clean blank slate. So let's come back over here and this is what I want my copyright footer text to look like. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to put this inside of, it's called a paragraph tag, a P tag. I'm gonna do an opening and then again, WordPress is nice and they take care of it for me and they automatically uh, do that. So I'm gonna paste this in here and just because I'm, I don't know, this is the way I like to format, I'm gonna put this all on the same line and I'm gonna say update file. Now when I refresh, great, that looks good. So this is what I want it to look like. Now the problem though is I want you to notice this 2020 right here. This, this is nice for right now because it's still the year 2020. But the problem is next year when it becomes 2021 or 2022 or forever after, you're gonna have to come back once per year and you're gonna have to edit this text. Let's not do that. I mean, computers are smart. Let's let the computer take care of it. So what we can do is I'm gonna give you this piece of code. You can put this in right where you want it. And I'm gonna do an open bracket, question mark, PHP. And I'm gonna close my PHP tag with another question mark and a closing bracket. Again, don't worry about this if you don't need to know the nitty gritty of it, but you can just copy this verbatim. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a, um, it's called a date tag in here. I'm gonna type date and then open and close parentheses, quote, and then a capital Y. Now, again, don't freak out if you don't understand what I'm doing here. What this is doing is this is making the computer generate the year for you. So if we come back and refresh, oop, Oh, I know what I did. I forgot to put echo. I need to say echo. And what this will do is this will actually um, force the computer to print the, the year of the date. So if I say update file and then I come back here and refresh, then it says 2020. So then the great thing is automatically January 1st, 2021, if anybody comes to our website, it'll say 2021, which is great. Now, the other thing I want is I want to make sure that, uh, see how it's kind of nice and small. I don't, I don't need it to be huge, bam, like in your face, all these, all this big string of text. So I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this smaller. And what you can do is rather than these P tags, I'm going to do a small and then a closing small and I'll say update file, refresh. And now it, it shrinks down that text a little bit more, which I actually really like. I think that I think that looks pretty solid. The other thing I'm gonna do too is I'm going to add um, my logo. So over here, I've just got um, this Rentastic logo. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to inspect and I'm just gonna use the same path, the same image URL uh, that I'm using uh, for, for this page. So right here, you can see this is the path to the full URL. I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna go copy link address. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do a new line. And I'm gonna, again, this is just some HTML code, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna put in an image tag. So I'm gonna type image, source equals, and then I'm going to paste in the, the URL that I just put in earlier, which is that. And then with your image tag, you always need to make sure to add um, an alt tag, which is alternative text. It's really good for SEO. It's kind of a requirement nowadays. So we'll say alt equals, and then in quotes, I'm just gonna say Runtastic logo. And then with an image tag, you always do a trailing slash. So I'm gonna do that. And then let's say update file. We didn't get any errors, so that's good. I'm gonna come back and I'm going to refresh and see how that looks. Wow, that is huge. Obviously, that looks terrible. So let's come back and I'm going to add now a style tag. And I'm gonna say, I want the width of this to be 200 pixels and I'm going to make my height, let's say auto. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that image and it's gonna shrink it down to 200 pixels. But with the height, I could explicitly put a height in there that says, oh, I want the height to be 200 pixels as well. But then it's gonna look funny. Actually, let's let's do that. I'll, uh, I'll show you what, what that looks like. So if I do 200 pixels and 200 pixels, obviously this is not a square logo and so it's gonna look really funny. See how stretched and nasty that is? That's not good. So what we wanna do is rather than putting the height, I'm gonna say auto. I'm gonna let the computer decide what it thinks the height should be. As long as we define one width, the computer can take care of the height for us. So I'm gonna say update file. Again, we'll go back and refresh. 
And there we go, that looks, that looks pretty good. The last thing though is I want the logo to be right on top of that copyright text. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm just going to put in a breaking tag. And what that does is it just forces it to be down on a new line. And so we'll say update file again, no errors, come back, refresh, bam, there we go. Now, obviously there's, uh, there's some couple of things I'm missing here, like the different links and stuff like that. That's kind of outside the scope of this video, um, but, I think that's looking pretty good. That's that's how I want it to look. I can see here that I've, I'll close this. I've got my logo, I've got my copyright text, it says all rights reserved, and the date will automatically change for me whenever the next year rolls around, which is super solid. So as you can see, it's really not that difficult. Adding uh, or editing the footer copyright text and the credits down there in your footer, it's pretty easy actually, it's really nice. Again, if you made a mistake, you made an error, we we highlighted all of the, co the text before, the code before, and put it in a separate file. So if you mess up, you can always just replace it and put it back to how it was before click update file, and then you'll be back exactly how it was before and you can start fresh. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's not too confusing. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment down below. Um, I'll try my best to answer those. Until next week, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you then.